right, we're going to add a uh, rotary control to Atari Jaguar controller. This will be play Tempest 2000 using the rotary controller option instead of the D-pad. If you watched one of my earlier videos, I showed how to enable the rotary controller option in Tempest 2000. I'll put a link to that video uh, in the show notes. But for this mod, we got a couple, three different ways we can do this. We can either get rid of the D-pad and put the rotary control here in place of it. But of course, you'll never be able to use this on any other game but Tempest 2000 if you do that. Another option is we can put the rotary control right here and then install a switch somewhere on this controller to switch between rotary control mode and D-pad mode. Or we can actually put the uh, rotary back here in the very back as well. For this modification, I'm going to put it right here on the front. I, I prefer it on the front than on the back or in the place of the D-pad. So I'm going to put it right here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up this controller and begin the modifications. Now the rotary encoder I'm using, this is a Borns rotary encoder. It's 24 pulses per revolution. Uh, this came from Mauser Electronics. I'll put a part number for this encoder down in the uh, show notes. Now you can actually get a little cheaper encoder just like this that doesn't have the push button part of it. I bought a batch of these encoders to make dedicated Tempest controllers out of old Epix 500XJ joysticks. And a lot of those only have the two buttons on the side. So I was using a third button, which is the rotary encoder here as a third button to use like for Super Zapper. But we won't be using it on this modification. And of course, find yourself a nice little knob. This came from Amazon.com. It's plastic, but it looks like it's metal. Pretty nice knob. It's a volume control for a stereo is what it is. So let's get started with the mods. Now the screws are hidden on the back of the controller underneath these little rubber pads down to these holes. So we'll take these pads off. Be careful with them because you can reuse them. So we can take the controller apart. Next, we need to get access to the bottom side of this circuit board here. Let's go take these screws out so we get to the back side of this board. Next, we're going to mount the uh, rotary encoder into the shell of the joystick. I bent the legs out straight, that's so, when this is flipped over the other way and put through this uh, casing here, this will sit flat up against the uh, case and still allow clearance for this circuit board to sit over the top of it. So now I want to drill my hole and get this mounted into the uh, case. Alright, got the hole drilled. And the rotary encoder mounted in it into the case. So next I'm going to hook up my select switch oops, to select between rotary control and D-pad control. We'll put it up here towards the top of the controller. Alright, I've got the mode select switch mounted. Now let's just get everything wired up and close it back up. Next we're going to locate the left and right D-pad functions along this bus right here and the ground. So we connect up uh, left and right to our rotary encoder and the ground up to the switch and the switch to here. So we need to disable the rotary encoder we want to use the D-pad. Alright, here's the initial wire hookups. We've got our ground right here, right, and left D-pad. So now these two will go to the rotary controller. This will go to the switch up on the top. Then I'll run another wire down to the center leg of the rotary controller, which is the ground right here in the middle. So I'll have right, ground, left, and I'll have a ground switch wire going up to here and then right back to the circuit board. Alright, all the wires are hooked up now. 
So now it's all left is to uh, put this thing all back together and give it a test. All right, there's the uh, assembled controller ready for testing now. All right, next we're going to enable the uh, jack wire cartridge, Tempest cartridge, to allow the selection for the uh, rotary control. And the way you do this is you press the pause button on both controllers at the same time. Now if you only got one controller, you can do the same thing by doing a jumper with a paper clip on port number two between pins six and four. Now when you successfully enable it, you should hear the game respond by saying yes. Or in this case, it said excellent. So now you notice controller type has now appeared. And now that's gonna stay uh, from now on. If I take the cartridge out, put it back in, it'll be there. You only gotta do this one time. It automatically saves the cartridge. So now I can go down and select the controller type and enable rotary control and uh, play Tempest with a rotary gamepad. Now it's time to uh, test the controller out. All right, let's put it in joystick mode real quick here. Just to see if the D-pad's still working. Yeah. D-pad still works. Put it in rotary control mode. Yep, that's still working. Now let's try the game. Yeah, there we go, it's working just fine. jump works. Let's try Super Zapper. Hey, everything works just fine. Awesome. All right. Cool. So that's how you convert your uh, Atari Jaguar controller to have a rotary controller built in for Tempest 2000. Thanks for watching.